Nora. And I'm Francis. Today, we're going to talk about the amazing minds that emerged during the scientific revolution, their serious criticisms, and how they would go on to influence modern technology. During the mid-14th century, Europe experienced a rebirth of art, writing, and philosophy in an explosion of new ideas called the Renaissance. The Renaissance included artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael, and writers such as Thomas More and Niccolò Machiavelli. The scientific revolution emerged from the Renaissance. Similar to the rebirth of art during the Renaissance, during the scientific revolution, many discoveries in mathematics, astronomy, and physics were made. Scientists and mathematicians began to disprove common beliefs of the world, and that did not settle very well for many Christians. For years and years, the Catholic Church clouded knowledge of the world and popular opinion discussing science. It looked a little something like this. The Earth is at the center of the universe, according to the Holy Scriptures. This is called the geocentric theory. Geo, meaning Earth. The Catholic Church accepted Aristotle's existing theories such as the world was made of water, air, earth, and fire. Contrasting Plato's theories, the belief Aristotle established was that everything that could be touched, smelled, tasted, seen, or heard was real in the world. Copernicus was the first person to question the geocentric theory the Church had taught for so many years. He proposed the heliocentric theory, which we now know to be true. In 1543, Copernicus published his book titled On the Revolutions of the Heavenly Bodies. Evidence of his findings lay simply in the physical book that he wrote in Latin, which was passed down to influence other astronomers. His book mentioned, I set forth the motions of the other stars and all their orbits together with the movement of the Earth, was the beginning, and he went on to completely go against everything the Catholic Church had taught for hundreds of years. I have found that the sun, not the earth, is the center of our solar system. Copernicus wrote his book very near to his death, almost to say that he literally passed too soon to be punished for his so-called sins. For the people that did read Copernicus's works, they were most definitely offended that anyone would contradict Aristotle's theory of natural philosophy and were disgusted by the, at the time, late Copernicus. The scientific son <coughs> of Copernicus was the one and only Galileo Galilei. Galileo followed up and supported Copernicus's heliocentric theory. Galileo was friends with Pope Urban VIII, who allowed him to pursue and research his theory. Although not first to invent it, Galileo used the optical telescope to observe the stars, the moon, and other parts of our solar system. He made significant discoveries about Jupiter and its moons, and furthered Copernicus's theory. At first, Galileo was thrilled to present his ideas, backed up with evidence, may I add, to the upper class and other scientists, but not everyone was as excited as he was. An important Vatican figure at the time, Niccolo Riccardi, read the book and was horrified to find sufficient evidence of the heliocentric theory. The Pope and the entire Catholic Church decided to persecute Galileo for an injunction against cheap teaching, holding, or writing anything of the Copernican theory. The church made this decision because they were terrified of the now no longer hypothetical, but scientifically proven heliocentric theory. They worried that if people began to question the geocentric theory, they would also question other teachings of the church. Afraid to lose their precious power and credibility, the Catholic Church ruled Galileo guilty, and Galileo was made to state that his theories were ridiculous. In a letter to the Inquisitor of Florence, Galileo wrote, quote, I curse the time devoted to these studies in which I strove and hoped to move away somewhat from the beaten path. Galileo was, char was charged with house arrest for life, went blind, ended up moving to Florence, and died. Despite that bitter ending, Galileo's works would be used to later on confirm the heliocentric theory and knowledge of Jupiter and its moons. Girls definitely did not run the world in the 18th century. In fact, men were the only ones deemed fit to determine if the world was round, flat, and whether it circled the sun or not. The rationale behind this idea that women should not pursue science was a woman's place had always been in the home, a societal norm that precluded innovation and discovery. Sexism, especially when concerning education, was alive and well during this time. Because women were not provided with the same opportunities in education at a young age, they were immediately limited in their success. Men were the intellectuals, and they didn't want to give up their status for the scapegoat of original sin. However, there were some exceptional ladies who pushed the envelope when it came to scientific pursuit. Like...
Maria Agnesi. Really rolls off the tongue. Maria Agnesi is most known for her work in mathematics. She wrote a calculus textbook at the age of 20 and was the teacher of her brothers. Her book was a great success. This mathematical discovery was a curve found today in most calculus curriculums. Evidence of her discovery lies in the textbook she wrote. Oh, here it is now. However, strangely, today it is called the Witch of Agnesi. So smart women are witches. Her along with Joan of Arc and Hillary Clinton. Another brilliant woman was Emily du Châtelet of France, who was a mathematician, physicist, and author. Because women were barred from the cafes where intellectuals conversed, Emily disguised herself and wore men's suits to enter. She did not allow societal norms to determine her intellectual value and was fearless in pursuing her studies despite the persecution she faced. It is said that Einstein's theory of relativity was inspired by Emily's work in mathematics. Women like Maria and Emily began to prove to the world that women were just as capable as men. Now, let's talk long-term impacts. First, Copernicus laid out the foundation for the heliocentric theory, which was incredibly influential because it allowed for many after him to continue to study it. Galileo and Kepler were instrumental in further development. To continue studies in astronomy all the way from the 17th century to today, we have used the developments Galileo made to the optical telescope. These scientists' dedication to their studies sparked further desires to explore, observe, and research the universe. Their outspokenness helped to break the church's control over scientific knowledge, which would inspire many future scientists, such as Charles Darwin. The women of the scientific revolution began to break the rigid gender roles in society. Women could no longer be marginalized and ignored when figures like Emily du Châtelet refused to be. The scientific revolution sparked an era of scientific pursuit. Although brilliant minds faced persecution for their controversial discoveries as well as genders, their findings were nothing short of extraordinary. Thanks for watching. I'm Dora.